Can you beat Elden Ring by only using Dragon Communion spells? Well, let's find out together. Yo, what's up guys, Toto Triceps here. Now, this challenge seemed like a really fun idea. Becoming a dragon and destroying bosses has always been my dream. The rules of this challenge are as follows. I can only use Dragon Communion spells to damage enemies. Dragon Cold spells won't be used in this run, only Dragon Communion spells. Now, some of you may have noticed you can't get Dragon Communion incantations without at least killing one dragon, right? Well, that's what your average player might say, but I'm no average player, I'm a below average player. And thus, I resort to cheap tactics like glitches. There exists a dragon in Elderling, a flying dragon grail, found patrolling the large bridge between northern and southern dragon barrel, and he has a serious issue with cliffs and death boxes. There is a way to glitch this dragon into the cliff and lock him in a continuous falling animation. If he stays like that long enough, the game will judge him not to be worthy enough and kill him on the spot, because he's a dragon with the ability to fly stuck in a cliff. Now I did not kill the dragon, Miyazaki did. I was just an unfortunate witness to this disaster. Now with the dragon heart and 80,000 runes in hand, we can finally start the run. I level up a bit, get rotten breath from the Cathedral of Dragon Commune, located in Hell, I mean Caleb. Collect two stone sword keys, and from the dungeon at the beginning of the game, I get a dragon communion seal. This bad boy boosts my dragon powers by roughly 15%. With all that in hand, I decided to just destroy Margit. Hit him with a rotten breath and just back off and wait for him to die. I had to apply rotten breath once more for him to die, but first major boss, down. I decided I need more runes and dragon hearts, so I pay Agil a visit in the lake, just to kill him in one hit. And I visit the Elder Dragon Grail to get 8000 runes and 5 dragon hearts. I just applied Scarlet Rat on him and watched him slowly die while stroking my ship. I also grabbed one half of the Tectus Medallion at that place. After that, Godric had to be shown that his dragon powers were no match for mine dragon powers. One shard bearer down. I took a quick detour to Fort Hyde to get the other part of the Dectus Medallion, and now we are finally ready for Leonia. Immediately in Leonia we need to get the Glintstone Key, as we needed to get to the Dectus Lift. And while I'm there I decided why not take another dragon down, so with a flawless dragon kill of Smarag we continue on. Now it's time for the Altus Plateau. I went around a bit and collected some golden seeds and sacred tears, and decided to take on our next shard bearer. Now to make this run even more interesting, instead of going for Renala like a normal person would, no, I decided General Dan is going to be my next target. Now Malenia definitely had a good idea when using Scarlet Throat on him, he is really weak to its effect. So I just inflicted him with Scarlet Throat and let it handle it. Also keep in mind that I haven't upgraded my talisman at all yet. Now I know some of you might be thinking, this run is easy, just Scarlet Throat everything and it's GG. But trust me, it will get much, much, much more difficult later on. And with that, we are going to make our way into the capital city. But before that, I decided it's time to actually upgrade my ship. First of all, I decided to upgrade my Scarlet Rot from Rotten Breath to Ezekiel's Decay. The name Dragon Spell do more damage and it's just common sense to upgrade to those. So I had to defeat Ezekiel's. It wasn't too difficult, as he is also susceptible to Scarlet Rot. I don't know why a dragon that spews that shit can be affected by it, but with him out of the way we get our first upgrade. The rest of the upgrades are primarily somber smithing stones, so I just ran around a bunch and collected them around the map. Got myself the faithful canvas talisman to boost my income damage by roughly 5%. I also decided to pay a visit to Radagon's doggy and murder him in cold blood, so I can get his jewelry, the Radagon's icon. Boost my casting speed by a bit, making the spells at least in theory cast faster. I say in theory because they cast so slow it's really difficult to tell if they actually cast any faster. With my sacred seal at plus 6 I decided to take on the Draconix 3 sentinel. You all know how it goes by now, Scarlet Rot and run. Why are you running? Why are you running? Now after entering the capital and making our way through it we encounter our first major hurdle of the run. Godfrey the first Elden Lord, actually just his ghost. And the reason why he's such a tough one is because ghosts can't be rotted. Shocking, I know. Plus his attacks are pretty fast and he closes the distance between us super easily. And if you haven't noticed by now, dragon spells are slow as shit. So I decided to take a break from him for a moment and go and upgrade my seal to plus 9 first. 
there are two ways to get a plus 7 somber this early in the game. One is through Godskin Noble and the other one is in the sewers of the capital. As I despised the Godskin, I went into the sewers gladly, got shot to death by lobsters and picked up the plus 7. Picked up the plus 8 and plus 9 sombers from the wastelands of Caleb and went around a bit to collect more sacred tears and golden seeds. I also completed various quest lines so I can get access to Mogwin Palace, so I can grind some more levels over at the Albernuic spot. That also means I had to torture a few souls online with my dragon spells. I need as much damage as I can get to help me with Godfrey. Now, back to the Godfrey fight. After all those upgrades, it took me a couple more tries to beat him. I noticed that I don't need to do two procs of my Smarag Greenstone Breath and just did one shot and run away until he died. Now, my dragon spells are starting to hit really hard. Morgoth time. And I was surprisingly lucky with him and beat him on my first try. I guess getting all those power ups from Godfrey really prepared me for the rest of the game. Alright, I was actually amazed that I managed to get this far into the game considering this is my first challenge run ever. So I would really appreciate it if you hit the subscribe button as I have more of this coming. Also, check out my previous videos. Continuing on to the mountaintops of the giants, we basically just run through everything because we already got everything we need. Fire giant is no easy task though. Why did Miyazaki decide to give him this much HP is beyond me. I encountered a few glitches while fighting him, so enjoy. Again, Scarlet Rot is the real hero of this run as it deals with the giant pretty easily. Though the fight felt more like a Monster Hunter game considering how long it lasted. After my patience has run dry, the giant finally bites the dust. Farumazula, here I come. Now for the most annoying fight in the entire game, the Cockskin duo, uh, I mean the Godskin duo. This is the first part of the run where I had a desire to quit, I just detest these guys. Any of our attacks are really hard to get off as they just blast our ass with fireballs as soon as I press any button. They are mostly just trial and error, I knew my damage was enough for them so I just had to keep on trying. After about 10 plus attempts, I got them. Godskin down. Now we are starting to get into the territory of bosses not only being super powerful, but fast as fuck boy. It started to become more and more difficult to get off my dragon powers. We move on through Ferro Mazula. Before Malekith I took down the Draconic Tree Sentinel for peak drip. Now we are the malformed dragon monstrosity, I say peak fashion. Malekith time. First phase went pretty well. It's just Scarlet rotted the guy and that's all that it takes to get into phase 2. Now, for phase 2... Yeah, that one is not going to be easy. Malekef is relentless, he really doesn't want you to take destined death, so I decided to take a break from him and went to kill Mo, the Lord of Blood. He is much easier to deal with as he is pretty passive outside his combos and can be kited really easily, also, he is a good source of 500,000 runes which are going to be needed for Malekev. With Mo down, I returned to Malekev. I knew I had the damage to take him on, it just required a bit of luck to get it. So I just got him to second phase, put on my bubble and just blasted my Ezekiel's breath. After that, it was just a dodging festival and praying to Jesus that he's not going to connect one of those crazy combos on my ass. I kited him for like 2 minutes but finally he also buys the dust. It was close though. I already know Godfrey and Radagon are going to give me a run for my money. Only 3 bosses remaining. Gideon is getting kicked immediately, really no challenge there as expected.
Now we finally arrive at the highlight of this game, the last two bosses. Godfrey the first Elden Lord stands in my way of completing this run. Godfrey, the first Elden Lord. His first phase was not as bad as I have plenty of time to get my Ezekiel's breath and Scarlet Throat is enough to take care of his first phase. The second phase though is a disaster. It's almost impossible to dodge everything that he has, let alone get off my dragon attacks. I managed to Scarlet Throat him though while he is still in this huge lava explosion attack. After that it was just a dodge festival once again. He was actually able to survive the Scarlet Throat with a pixel of HP, so I had to risk one last Marag breath in order to finish him. Somehow I managed to get through this on my first try, and believe me, that really surprised me. <laughs> Now for the moment that you have all been waiting for, the final boss, and... Yeah... <laughs> Got clapped like 50 plus times. I decided to level up at 150 at the Mogwin Palace because I was not going to be able to deal enough damage to the both of them to kill them at 125. It was mathematically impossible. I also decided to finally add some buffs into the build like Golden Bow and Plain Grant Me Strength. That's not against the rules because those spells deal no damage and the rules state that I must not do damage with anything other than Dragon Communion spells. The only problem now left to solve was figuring out a good strategy to defeat Radagon in an easy manner. The conclusion I arrived on that there is no easy way. Scarlet Throat was not doing enough damage to justify it, and considering how aggressive he is, it's hard to survive in that room with him. I saw that he's weak to fire though, so it was time to pull out a Gil's Flame. I buffed myself, hit him hard in the beginning, and then just baited him to do some long wind up attacks so I can punish him with a Gil's Flame slowly. The fight was close, but I managed to kick him. I honestly thought this exact attempt was going to be a throw. Now on to Elden Beast. I did not have much hope for this fight. He is only susceptible to physical attacks. Fortunately we have Dragon's Claw just perfectly made for that. It was time to get good. Honestly I thought that this fight was impossible to do but I somehow managed to persevere and I'll just let you watch the fight. I was screaming in happiness just about then. With that I can say it's possible to beat Elden Ring with only Dragon Communion spells. Like and subscribe for more of these stupid challenges, also check out my other videos. Toto Triceps out.